realize that building family memories is going to cost you time and effort. Time and effort. It takes time to build family memories. Uh, and, and I know that for the bulk of this message, I've been preaching about spiritual family memories. And how many of you think those are important, right? Yeah, That's yeah. the foundation. But let me tell you what will really make those spiritual memories have a powerful impact. Is when those memories are joined with many, many other memories of just families being together, having fun, and doing stuff. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Positive family moments. Like having a barbecue on the 4th of July when it's not raining. Amen. <laughs> like making the most of the rain and enjoying the 4th of July anyway, right? And you know, I think that Christian families ought to model family fun and togetherness for the world. Amen. I believe that. We ought to be able to have the most fun and have the happiest family and the most joyful life ever because that's the most important thing, you know, is, is, is that we honor God. And I love the book of Job. Uh, Job is lamenting here. I'm going to read a scripture uh, that it, from the book of Job, but he's lamenting and he's wishing that he could go back in time. This is what he says in Job 29. He says, just as I was in the days of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were around me, when my steps were bathed with cream and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. He was thinking back to that moment of time when the blessings of God were his, when his children were there. And how many of you know, this isn't just talking about the little toddlers, right? Everybody loves toddlers. I mean, we love kids and they grow up element. Every age has their own blessing. But let me tell you something, there's also a blessing when your kids are grown and they all gather around. Am I right? Absolutely. And he was thinking about all of those things. And then I don't know about you, but I love to see people on Facebook have a good time. Yep. How many of you love to see that? Amen. You look and you see your friends and you and, 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 and you see that and, and they're they're going somewhere, they're in California having fun and they're just swimming and doing stuff. It's good for families to do that. It's good and it's healthy and it's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, and so what I'm trying to say is, listen, take those moments of life and enjoy them. I wonder if Job wasn't thinking, you know, I really didn't enjoy it as much as I should have back then. And he was lamenting and thinking, I wish I could go back. But how many of you know you can't go back? You can't go back in time. But let me tell you what you can do. You can make the most of today. Yep. You can call your children yep. today. Yep. You can plan something fun today. Yep. You can do stuff today. You can enjoy your life today. That's right. Mm. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to have some fun. <laughs> and you know the most beautiful thing about this message is it really doesn't take any kind of special training to build family memories. All you need is someone who's willing to do it, right? Do you know that children spell love differently than most adults do? Can I tell you how children spell love? They spell it with a T and an I and an M and an E. They spell love as time. When you give time to children, that's called love. And healthy parents don't find time, they make time. And it's so difficult at times. Why? Because we're busy with all these demands and these pressures. And in the midst of all the busyness, children can come and eat. And it easily seems like it's an interruption. And it's really it's kind of an unrealistic thought to think that every time, you know, a child comes and we need to drop everything and cater to them. I don't think that's what I'm, I'm trying to say today. I know that's not. But, but we have to definitely make time for those things. And recognize when those moments are there. Acknowledge your kids when they get up in the morning. Set it aside special time for them. I know one dad who always made chocolate chip pancakes for his family on Sunday morning. And I always wanted to go by his house and have one. But I always got to be at the church so I never can. But anyway, we've got to set aside quantity time at certain times during the week. As you study your children, you may discover that there are certain times during the day when they're more open to chatting than others. And a smart parent's going to set aside that schedule 
you know, in, in their in their time and in their day, so they just happen to be available to talk with their kids at those moments. You know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I just don't have the money to make great family memories. That's a lie from Satan. You don't need money to make family memories. Am I right? right. All you need is just a few dollars to go buy a Monopoly board. You know, have a game night. Amen. Amen. For me, just make it taco night. Hello. Yeah. Are there any taco eaters in the house? Right? <laughs> have, 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 a, have a movie night and get the popcorn going, right? And, and just be together. That's what I'm saying. Don't spend your life so busy working and so busy doing all these other things that you don't stop and enjoy life. I'm feeling this today. And uh, one of the things I read many years ago is that, you know, that people, how do people really experience that they're loved? A lot of people say, well, you got to tell them I love you. I, I think that's important, right, to say I love you. That's important. But what psychologists have found out that that's not really what makes people feel loved. What really makes people feel loved is when they come home and when somebody inquires about them and says, how was your day? What's going on? How, how was school? How was work, honey? You know, you know, did the car drive okay? You know, how are you feeling today? What's life? When you start communicating on that level, that's what makes people feel loved. And my wife is an expert at that. She used to be up here teaching this today. But I remember back when Derek was just out of high school and he'd come home and Dream would start asking questions. Well, where you been? Who you been with? What's happening? And Derek would be like, you know, what's with the 20 questions? You know, I'm 19 years old. I don't need it. And she just, I just care about you, honey. I, and she was great at that, right? And, and let me tell you something. It's important. It's important to communicate that. And I believe that many times that lack of time, uh, you know, or even choosing to make time may be the most insidious, pervasive, and destructive enemy the healthy family has. Time is a concrete, measurable expression of love. And when you spend time with your kids, what you're saying is, I love you and I value you. Amen. Don't you think this is a good message today for Amen. a busy world? Come on. Give the Lord a big hand of praise today. Amen. Amen. You know, most people would say that their family is the top priority, one of their top priorities. And uh, recently a survey was done and they asked a group of people who had responded that marriage and family was their number one priority in life, just underneath the Lord. And they asked this question, do you plan your expenditure of time and money around your marriage and family relationships? And over 80% stated that while they valued their marriage and their family, what in fact happened was that they didn't consistently give their marriage and their family first place. When 1,500 school children were asked the question, who, what do you think makes a happy family? The most frequent answer was this, a family that does things together. Yeah. Amen? And I've learned something in life in my 58 years. It's not so much really what we do for our kids that impacts them as much as it is what we do with them. Right. Am I right? Yes. It's important that we do That's things right. together. So when you think of the good old days, what is it that you think of? I want to just tell you one story, and then we're going to close this today. This is a story I found on the internet of an old guy. I don't know, he must he, he, you know, an old pastor that had this website. It was like antique looking, and he must have made it in the, the day the web you know, came out. Because I mean, but it's a great story. And it's about a middle-class family in the 1940s, all right? He, he must have been an old guy to know these things. But they had set this family, they had set a family goal of remodeling the bathroom. It's a true story. And after a year of financial sacrifices, they finally had had enough cash for the project. And, and, and at the family conference they held to finalize the plans, one of the children made a suggestion. They said, why don't we use the money for a trip and fix the bathroom next year? That sounds like a kid, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, even though it changed everybody's plans, they thought that was a great idea. And so they, you know, took the money and they made a big trip to Yellowstone National Park. And, and uh, so they had to start saving all over again for the next 
the next year. And, and when it came time to hire the contractor the following year, you know, the family's conversation always drifted to how much they enjoyed the trip to Yellowstone National Park. And they suggested, why don't we just put the bathroom off again another year and go on another trip? Did you know that family did that 10 years in a row? <laughs> From 1940 to 1950, they put off remodeling the bathroom. Yeah. And it was shortly after that, their youngest son wound up being killed in Korea, in the Korean War. And on the night before his final battle, he wrote a letter to his parents. The letter arrived months after the family had been notified of his death, you know, Back in the day, there was really snail mail, apparently. But there was a special emotion as mom and dad sat in their living room and read to each other their son's last words. In this touching letter, the young soldier expressed kind of a premonition that he might soon die. And he thanked his folks for their love and the many happy experiences of growing up, especially recalling the annual family trips they all shared. Can you imagine that? A long silence followed the reading, and I believe mom and dad were very moved. Finally, the silence was broken when dad asked, Honey, could you imagine a son running home on the night before he died and saying how glad he was for a fancy new bathroom? <laughs> That's right. I doubt that would have happened, right? That's right. That's right? Let me tell you something. The things in life are not how nice your bathroom looks. It's not how detailed your lawn is. Amen. It's not how clean the house is. Amen. Amen. It's whether you spend that all-important time with family. Yeah. And this is a message from the heart of a pastor who loves his congregation. And I just really have an assignment for you. It's a fun one. Go do something fun. All right? Enjoy the day. Enjoy the day. You say, well, Pastor, I've got so many worries. Let me tell you something. Put the worries off till tomorrow. Just say, tomorrow I'll worry about those things. But today, I'm just going to enjoy my life. The old saying says, stop and smell the roses along the way. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Thank you so much today for your kindness and your help today.